not only for airbrushing, but brush painting is a huge help. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and today I'd like to talk to you about this stuff here. This is the Flow Improver, which is made by Vallejo and it's one of those little uh, additions that I guess a lot of people don't know how to use. Now it's described as an airbrush flow improver, but I'm going to show you how you use it uh, for brush painting and how it really helps in making washes. So from the overhead there, you probably get a really close up of these products. Okay, so there's your airbrush flow improver. You can get this in different sizes. I think they start from about 17 mil. Uh, this is the, is that the 60 mil? No, that's the 32. There is a 60 mil and then there's a huge 200 mil. So if you're brush painting, this is probably about the sort of size you'd be looking at. If you only do it now and again, then maybe the smaller bottle. So that's what the small bottle size is going to be. Now what I'm going to demonstrate is how this uh, is used with other water-based paints and how it improves uh, the actual finish. Okay, so what I have here is I have Vallejo, which is an artist style um, acrylic paint. It's like a gouache type. This is an actual artist acrylic, which is made by Scale 75. So these two are very similar in their characteristics. This is a very concentrated version of this. Over here we have the Tamiya. Tamiya is a hybrid acrylic, and I call it hybrid because it's been designed as an alcohol base. So having an alcohol base in it means you can mix it with lacquer thinners and it can still spray very well. The alcohol evaporates quite quickly. So when you try to brush paint this particular paint, it can be quite difficult because when your brush starts to create a skin and then when you apply a second coat it starts bringing up the skin removing the uh, fine um, uh, surface detail okay so basically what we're going to do is we're going to add some of this flow improver into the paint and make it uh, easier to brush paint now I think I'll better start off with explaining what this stuff does now flow improver is actually a surface tension breaker so what it's doing is it's removing the surface tension so just to explain what surface tension is, if you've ever used regular water and you put it into a little cup and then if you put it in the cup and you look through the side, you'll see that it's got this little curve on it. Okay, so the edge is actually picking up higher and if you went to you know, high school and you did science, then the bottom part is called the meniscus and that's where you used to measure to. Well, that little curve there is created by surface tension and that's actually uh, something that doesn't work very well when you're brushing because if you apply it to a flat surface, you actually get a little bubble of liquid. And it's that bubble of liquid that if you leave it there and as it dries, it'll leave you with watermarks. So that's where watermarks come from. So traditionally these, you'll be using uh, water to thin them down, or you can use thinners as well, which has an alcohol content in it. Now the alcohol content within them for spraying is there to reduce the drying time, okay? Because if it um, hangs around too long, they can drip but sometimes you want it to take longer. So that's where the flow improver helps because naturally these paints do dry very quickly. By adding flow improver, uh, it acts as a retarder as well, which means it takes longer to dry and it gives the paint some time to actually level and give you a smooth surface. The tension breaking uh, characteristics of this helps it uh, come out of the airbrush smoother. So it's not trying to cling onto the nozzle. Uh, and then I'll show you how I use it for brush painting. And with that, I'll show you how to make a wash as well. Okay. So you may have um, watched some of my earlier um, tutorials about making a wash out of scale 75. And I indicated that you can use regular household detergent for dishwashing. So that's very, uh, that's fine and all. Sometimes dishwashing liqu liquids can be tinted, which isn't the best. Most of the time it doesn't really affect it. So you can still use that but this is a much purer form because there's no actual detergent in this, okay? This is a pure form of surface tension breaker, which is very much like the uh, uh, liquid that's used uh, in the old film days uh, for allowing film to dry after washing, so there's no watermarks. Uh, and it's also used within uh, the artist community as well, quite often with water-based paints. Okay, so over here I have my wet palette, which I've already set up. So we've got our paper here. So this is our God Hand palette paper. Underneath we've got our God Hand uh, toweling. But of course you can also use any other wet palette. This is just the method we're using here at the moment. All right, so let's show you 
We'll, we'll start with the stuff that's the hardest to brush paint, which is the Tamiya stuff. Okay, so let me demonstrate this. We'll open it up. All right, so I've got a little green one there. Let's shift this across. I've got this example here, which I've used on quite a few other videos before as well. So you can see here, this is still the remnants of the wash I made with the scale 75. Now I'll probably be working on, let's see, more of this flat section. This will give you a better idea. Just to demonstrate what I mean by surface tension, let's see if I can just do the water to start with. So you see the water there, it's just beaded. And that's what we want to get rid of. Okay, see that? It's just a big bead. Now if I put a drop of that, let's undo this, and we'll apply a drop here. You see that immediately, it's already started to flatten out. Now if I mix that, actually it's still got a bit of paint in it. Well, probably a good thing, because that lets you see exactly what it's doing. So you see how that is just clinging to the surface now, wherever I push it. So that's basically what we want it to do. Okay, so it's clinging to the surface rather than creating these little water bubbles. And as simple as that, that was only one drop and we were able to achieve that. Okay, so let's just do some mixing here. All right, so we've got our alcohol-based paint here. All right, so just say for instance, we want to just use that now. I'll show you what it's gonna be like, just brush painting it straight out of the bottle. Okay, just across this surface. So you see that the, the characteristics of it, it is reasonably thin. You see that, it's, it's sort of like a glaze. So you will need to put another coat over the top. And it is a little bit um, uneven. Okay, so that will need another coat. We'll let that dry first. In the meantime, I'm gonna mix up some here with some flow improver or surface tension breaker. All right, so I'm just gonna add one drop to that. Mix it up. Now this is going to extend the drying time, which means there's gonna be less chance of streaking. So let's do that over here. So you can see that there. So it applied pretty similarly, but you'll notice that it is already a smoother looking finish. It's just um, collected a little bit on this side, simply because this is where I ended the brush. So that's loaded up a little bit more. But by adjusting that uh, with say water as well. So if I, I mix that through, I've just got a bit of water on the end of this brush. I'll thin that down. We we'll start making that into a glaze. I'll do that on this side. So see how it's getting thinner? And if I add even more water, we'll be able to get this into a wash. Okay, the thing is, as you're adding more water, you may need to use more tension breaker or flow improver because you just changed the, um, the concentration. But looking at that, it still looks like it's going on fairly smoothly. So you can see there, it's actually pulling back a little bit now. So that doesn't have enough in it. So we'll add, actually, it's a bit hard for you to see there. We'll add some more in there, put another drop in that lot. And you can just see how that's already reacted. And then we'll mix it up. And if I apply that over here, you see how it's not pulling up on the edges anymore. You can see that they're still drawing in and that's how you get watermarks. So that's pretty much what this is gonna do. Now, obviously if you thin it even more with water, 
So let's make a full wash. All right, so I've got this one here. Just an empty container. Now, what I might do is I'll start experimenting with the other paints, just so you can see how it works equally with the other brands of paint as well. Okay, let's just cap this off. Move these aside. All right, leave that there so you get a better idea of the finish. And these are still drying up. Okay, that's probably half dry. That's still quite wet, and these are still very wet. Okay, let's remove the Tamiya. Let's go with the scale 75. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of scale 75 in here, and we'll create a wash. Okay, so this is the blue. All right, got a little dollop in there. All right, now I'm going to mix some water in here. I'm going to make this quite thin. And I'll show you before the tension breaker added. Okay, so with a little bit of time, you can see how these are started to dry up now. So this was the Tamiya acrylic straight out of the bottle brush painted on. And then this is brush painted on with the uh, a drop of the flow improver. So it's already much smoother in look. And then over here, this is varying amounts of wash. Okay, so it was with a, a touch of water. Uh, this was with more water, but you'll notice that it actually is starting to pull back from the edges. So we needed to add more tensioner to that. And this is with more water and more tensioner to balance it. So you can see how smooth that is and it's created a really nice wash. So even with this particular paint here, I guess most people would never have thought that you'd be able to turn these into a wash. You can quite easily do so right there. Okay, so it's just the simple principles of breaking down the surface tension of the water. All right, so let's create a wash with scale 75. Now I've shown this before, but I've just used uh, household dishwashing detergent. And I'll show you this by, I'll mix it down with a lot of water. We'll make a very thin wash. I'll show you what it looks like without any surface tension breaker or flow improver. And then I'll show you immediately what the uh, it's going to look like with the tensioner added. Okay, so let's add some water here. I'm going to add quite a bit of water because we want to make this pretty thin. Okay, there's a fair bit in there. I'll just mix that up. See how that's flowing off the, the brush already. And just with water and with the acrylic, you can already see that it's got the water tension there. That's what we want to get rid of, okay? And to demonstrate, let's see if I can get this to pull up just here. See how it's pulling back on itself? And it's creating these just like water droplets. That's what we don't want, okay? Because what's going to happen is if we try to use it as a wash, say for pin washing, I'll try to do some pin washes in here. Okay, if I apply that, see how it's just pulling in the corner? It's not actually going anywhere. So that is not what we want from a wash. It's only clinging to the sides. It's not looking very smooth at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we'll add some of this. Now you'll notice that I was using one drop before, so it was basically for a small amount. There's quite a lot in here now. so. I'm going to add four drops. We'll see how that works. And if it still pulls back, we'll just start adding a bit more. And the easiest way to, to test that is just got a test bit of plastic like this, and we can do the same thing. Okay, so let's put a drop there. It's probably not as smooth as I like. It's still pulling back. You see, it's pulling back on these edges. It's making a real light color. And then it's still pulling quite a bit along the inside here. So let's add a bit more. This probably needs quite a bit more, probably four more drops. Okay, we'll try that again. Okay, so you can see that there, that is much smoother in its application. So you just got to test it as you're making your mix, and if you're happy with it, 
then start using it. Okay, let's see what it's going to look like in some panel areas. Okay, let's do the following one over here. And you immediately see how it's much tighter. So it can be this one to this one. And that's basically how you make a wash. So that was with the scale 75. Okay, so that's the scale 75 here. That's the Artist Acrylics. You can use this with any of the other scale 75s as well. Even if you're using, say, the game color as well, uh, or model color from Vallejo, or even the, the game colors from scale 75, they'll do exactly the same thing. So how about I'll make a thin wash again. Let's try it. Let's do this here. Let's get rid of this. All right, so I've got this quite a bit of water here. Spilled a bit there. Let's just clean that up. All right, so there's a lot of water in this one, and let's do a really thin wash with the Vallejo. Let's do a couple of drops. Actually, my paint's all blocked up. That's not going to help, is it? All right, let me go get another one. I'll unblock that one later. All right, do the same thing there, but it's in black now. All right, so hopefully this one's not blocked. Looks okay. All right, we'll do, that's one drop, two drops. Okay, two really small drops are sitting in there. Probably see it easier there. So the two little drops are starting to separate now. Mix it up, super thin wash here, super thin. Okay, so if I put some on the cap there, see how transparent that is? Okay. So again, I'll show you. If I put this onto an area here, and we'll brush it across, you'll see how it pulls up. Is that little water drop? That's not what we want. Okay, so again, I'm going to be adding some of this in here. So it's probably a little bit more than my blue mix here. So I'll, I'll start with 10. We'll do 10 drops. But you just need to play around with that. This has all got to do with a feel. Okay, so you just need to find it at a point where it doesn't pull, and that's what, what you want. Let's see if I can find an empty spot here. All right, so it's already flowing really well by itself. Okay. And that's your really thin wash. And let's just try it along a panel line. Let's try this one here. So I can see how, actually I'll probably put a bit too much one here, get rid of some of that. And again you can see how it's collected along the, the sides, where you would want a regular wash to be. And you can see where the blue one is still pulled up. And you can see this one, which has started to dry now, this blue wash has clung onto the edges. Okay, so that's basically what you're doing here. In a way, I could probably add some more tensioner onto that. Okay, so we'll add some more. Because there was quite a lot of water there. Mix it up a bit. Let's see if that's going to give us a different feel over this side. Okay, so it's marginally different. It is giving that really smooth transition or uh, graduation from the main color on the inside. But you can see how just adding the flow improver has made such a difference. Okay, so that's the airbrush flow improver by Vallejo. It can also be known as a, a surface tension breaker at art stores, but this stuff is easy to find everywhere. And it makes such a difference. So there's the results. We've got the Tamir here. So the Tamiya uh, acrylic, which is the hybrid, so it's got the alcohol in it. So this is the same sort of finish you would get with the Mr. Hobby or the uh, GSI aqueous colors. And progressively you see this is without flow improver. This is with, you see how it's already smoother. 
disregard this part because I actually touched it before it dried. So this part here, and then this is with progressively more water, and then a little bit more surface tensioner to help it um, flow across the surface. This is with just water added, and you'll notice that it's pulled back on the edges, not enough surface tensioner. And then we've done this with, the blue is a very thin version of the scale 75. And you see here, that's scale 75, only water, and it's pulling up scale 75 with the flow improver and it's stuck to the edges, that's what you want. Over here we've got Vallejo, so you notice that Vallejo works exactly the same. This is without any uh, additive, no flow improver at all, you see how it's still pulling. And you see this one, how it's got that unusual water mark, okay, it's because there's the high tension on the surface. And then over here we've mixed it with surface tensioner uh, breaker, and then there's examples of it being used within uh, as a panel liner. So simple as that and then even if you're just brush painting large areas not just doing washes it helps a great deal. It, you end up with a much smoother brush finish um, and I guess a lot of the time you'll be able to get a very smooth finish without the need of an airbrush. So that's it. So that's the Vallejo flow improver and that's how you use it um, for brush painting. So it's not only for airbrushing, but brush painting is a huge help. So if you like to make your own water-based washes, or even just to make a general coating much smoother, then just add some of this. Experiment a little bit, you'll be able to recognize how um, uh, it flows just by feel, and then you can adjust it as you go. So there you go, there's a little tip for you.